Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of the Bibliophiles, and today I'm going to be talking about Red Inferno, 1945. <clears throat> Essentially it's, um, um, well, the Russia just sort of double crosses the United States, and, you know, lots of battles happen and stuff like that, and, um, <clears throat> Essentially, it's uh, very predictable, you know, like, <clears throat> I know I'm going to be spoiling the thing, but if, if you just went in this line, you'd immediately know what's going to happen, you know. Of, of course, Russia invades, and then there's like, occasionally there's this little town that's sieged, and occasionally we cut off to that, but for the most part, the story revolves around the United States and other allies being pushed back, <clears throat> and um, you know, like you, you, we all know what's going to happen. We know that we can, we know that the allies are going to make like a little, de little deal with the Germans and help them out, and we know that that uh, Americans are going to build the atom bomb and they're going to use it on Russia and save Europe. You know. <clears throat> It's essentially like, um, I guess they could say it's like the literary equivalent to like a Michael Bay film, <clears throat> except not nearly as horrible and offensive. Uh, final rating is two stars. It's not awful, but it's predictable. You can see any, everything that's going to happen, and there's no surprising turns anywhere. <clears throat> But if you find it in your local library, I'd say, eh, whatever. You know, it's a good time say it's a good time waster, time killer. You know. Well, till next time, I'm your host signing off. See ya.